Okay. Welcome to another Sunday WOAY ABC4 Community Forum where we talk to community leaders and local success stories to discuss important information that affects Southern West Virginia. I'm your host, Lake Lewis Jr. Today we're joined by another distinguished guest. Today we have Mr. Lee Leftwich, who is the director of the Muster Project. He joins us this morning. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. It's a beautiful day to be here as well. Absolutely. Appreciate you coming on. And you've got a great endeavor that you're part of, that you're the director of, and we're going to get right into it, the okay. Muster Project. Right. I know what it is, but for our viewing audience, can you go a little bit in depth about yeah. that? Well, the Muster Project is a, a nonprofit organization that started back in 1990. Okay. And what we were involved with was identifying the young black male at this particular time because statistics show that the young black male was uh, been incarcerated one out of five times more mm -hmm. so than their other counterparts. Right. So we got together a, a young uh, gentleman that worked at Lowe's, uh, Booker Walker was the one that inspired us. Mm -hmm. He wasn't from Beckley, he was from, uh, really from Cleveland. So, okay. you know, he had a lot more uh, I can stand Bob up with youth and activities like that. So he came down and he, he, he placed upon his heart to have a program that would help the youth. And one of the reasons was, um, to tell you straight up, is that the young man came into his store at Lowe's and he said, yo man, give me a job. <laughs> and he kind of overlooked that a little okay, bit. He says, well, right. okay. He said, there's dress, pants, sagging. He says, uh, okay, all right. He said, but you got to fill out this application. Then you had to fill out applications, okay? Sure, of course. And he says, he gave the application to the young man and he couldn't read and couldn't write. And he went like, whoa, how many other kids out there like that? Yeah. So that inspired him, God inspired him, and, and he was handing out um, leaflets to people that come into his store, mainly black men, okay. and said, we need to do something. So about 25 of us got together, started a conversation about how we grew up and how we can interject without outgrowing up to other young youth. Mm -hmm. But it went down to about 15, because some of them just didn't have the time. And from that blossomed the Muster Project. And what we did is that we wrote grants to be able to fund our positions. We had after school programs. We had programs that would deal with anger management, mm -hmm. deal with uh, academic wise. And so what was happening that over the years that we was involved, we started getting criticized a little bit. To a degree, as to why are you only dealing with these young black males? Well, I mean, they need help. <laughs> yeah. And, and, <laughs> and my scenario was if you, there's four youth in a car, mm -hmm. two whites, two blacks, mm -hmm. girl and boys, both, right? Mm -hmm. And you come upon a car wreck, mm -hmm. and the black boy was driving a car, and he got hurt the worst. Who are you going to tend to first? I said, it's not like they all won't get treated, mm -hmm. but we have to have something to start with. Mm -hmm. But since then, we have revolved, and we have all kids. We've been in schools. We was the only organization that could actually go into schools mm -hmm. and do behavior programs. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a wonderful thing. And, and by far, over the years, things revolved. Money started going away. Sure. To the fact that everybody was trying to get it. I mean, at that time, we was really, really involved to, to the depth that we have received national uh, recognition okay. for our involvement. Uh, I've, I've got all kind of trainings that I'm trainer of trainers and that sort of bit. And so what happened was, as the funds started drilling, they start putting more funds into schools. Mm -hmm. Then 
an approach of the individuals who knew I had been involved with, for at the then, you know, 22 years. Mm -hmm. Said, well, Lee, why don't you get involved with the Raleigh County Teen Court? Mm -hmm. Well, we had thought about that years back, you know, because it was something that mm -hmm. was started back in 1974 when Teen Court actually was instituted to be a part of oh. the system, right? Okay. So three years it took me to get this Teen Court going. It wasn't easy. Uh, had to convince the judge. Great is easy. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, mean, I mean, if it's if it was too easy, then it's not worth working yeah, absolutely. for. That's my that's absolutely. my trick. Absolutely, God wants so, you to work for it. <laughs> yeah, after three years of it, uh, trying to get it what we blossom, and so the Raleigh County Teen Court is the only program we have now. Nice that that we have been for the past twelve years. Well, you know, I, I will say this too, and just just listening to the story, you know, um, you know, obviously some people know I'm on ABC back home in DC, and. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, I actually have a, my own company oh. and and it helps, you know, kids coming straight straight out of college get into the media world oh. um, where they don't have a lot of opportunities because this is tough to get into. Oh, yes. It really is. Yes. So but I found over the years that most of the people that were reaching out to me were young black men. Uh -huh. And it was just because that's yeah, what yeah, I am. You know, right, right. So mm -hmm. they felt more comfortable, I guess, coming to me. Exactly. So I've always tried to help. I mean, mm -hmm. I have everyone now that I help. Sure. But yeah, I mean, there is something in you that you feel like you do owe, you know, the opportunity to help someone right. if they need that, especially if, if they look like you. Exactly. You know? exactly. Because, you know, and, and, it's, and it's a part of society, mm -hmm. there is not a, a lot of black role male models mm -hmm. in our society. Mm -hmm. And, and it's... I don't know what the reason is that it's not. Well, sometimes, sports, it's, not sometimes you know? it's not reported as much. <laughs> right, right, well, that's true. That's, that's, that's exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I mean, if you, if in some of the news things, you see that there's a lot of individuals who are doing some things, mm -hmm. and they're doing it just because they are involved within our small communities. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that, that has been a blossom to me, so to speak, for what I do is because in, in Raleigh County and, and in Beckley, I'm well known okay. for my fact that I was with the Monster Project, which mm -hmm. was getting all kind of media reports, TVs, radio, whole nine yards, because of what we was doing. Mm -hmm. And then I was involved with city council. Okay. So that sprang me there. Opened and then some doors. And also for the fact that through the years that I was involved with Monster Project, um, I was on a national advisory committee. Mm -hmm. When you said you were from D.C., I went to D.C. many a time, right? Yeah, that's to, home. To, we reported to the committee that report to Congress to make juvenile laws. Mm -hmm. So we was a part of getting some of the juvenile laws passed. And one of them here recently was the, uh, the uh, what you call it, the truancy okay. thing where, you know, had to be truancy 10 days. You know? I mean, come yeah. on, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When I was growing up, they had a truancy officer. I don't know what it was in usual. They would come and get you. Oh, no, they would come and get you. Yeah. Absolutely. What, what, you better get in school. What's wrong yeah, with you? Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so we've gotten away from some of those traditional things that really blossom us. Yeah. And we and, and now it's so high tech that we forget that things sometimes have to be personal. Well, it has to be hands on. Yeah. You know, and, and high tech has kind of gotten away from, you know, I'm sure when you were younger, when I was younger, you know, the neighborhood parented yes. you yes and if you got in trouble a <laughs> neighbor could <laughs> discipline you right and then you were going to get it again from get your parents again. because you made the, the house look bad <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, so we've kind of gotten away from that right and i can remember when i talk with the youth i tell them how it was when i was growing up mm -hmm. now mind you uh, look we, we start we started at the alternative ed school it was a school in, in down in was alternative ed school we mm -hmm. was going to jump in the hornet's nest okay. <laughs> okay. You know so That's we got right. we got involved in there and then we started noticing that a lot of the kids was coming to the alternative school and they didn't want to go back to the home school so we said whoa so we went try to get involved with the high schools which we did mm -hmm. well it was like you know they were still not quite performing so we moved back to the middle schools mm -hmm. Okay, we did a little good thing there for a minute, but then we start seeing like the kids coming in middle school in the sixth, sixth and seventh grade was like still out of control. So we went to the elementary, elementary school. schools. Long story short, we started in Head Start. Nice. We moved our program back to Head Start. Nice. I used the old phrase, the Barney Five uh, a phrase, nip it in the bud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we oh, tried yeah, to exactly. we tried to start in there. Get it before it starts. Yeah, before it starts. Mm -hmm. and, and and we found out that youth at that, you know, Four, three, four, five years old was angry, mm -hmm. mainly because of their household environment. Mm -hmm. So we become that that father figure, mm -hmm. you know. And at this time, I had uh, some females that was a part of my uh, system program. Mm -hmm. So we was able to like 
show a, a, a male female role model mm -hmm. with the kids and that there was really a it was a program called second step nice we used puppets and, and cue cards and stuff and they loved it well again funding went away but i was able to train some of the teachers now whether it's still in school or not i don't know right but they need to start things at a very very young age well, that's the, the the formative years <laughs> yeah you know, they were what you see is really what you retain right and take that into your life so right I, I, you know, just the fact that you guys work with, and, and I wanted to ask you, is mm -hmm. that term, mm -hmm. you know, troubled teen? Yeah. It's kind of harsh. Yes, yes. And sometimes it's misinformed teens, or right. teens that don't have adequate um, supplies or resources. Exactly, exactly. And, w and when we say troubled, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, it's a harsh word, mm -hmm. but it means we all have trouble. Sure. You know, uh, biblically they said you would have troubles. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we we use that as a as an awakening and an awareness. Trouble. What do you mean trouble? Okay. Well, are you doing things that that keep you out of trouble? Because that's my word. To I see the kids, you stand out of trouble, ain't you? Mm -hmm. All the time. <laughs> you know? All so, the time. <laughs> so, and I have seen youth. Now, mind you, we've been around for thirty two years. So, you know, I, I have now seen youth that are like adults. To have kids, right? And, and they still they still reach out. Oh yes, yes. Nice. <laughs> I mean, See, that's, I mean, that's you, the, and that's that's the reward because you don't. That know means who, you touch them. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you don't really know who you touch. Yeah. You, you know, you, you don't. They wear around for badge, but. Sometimes when, when you see the kid, Mr. Leftwich says, I remember you and blah, 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 blah. So it's like, wow, they did listen to what I said, you mm -hmm. know. Because, again, we, we related things how we was growing up mm -hmm. to how, I mean, not I'm listening to it now, but later on in life, mm -hmm. it would come to you. And right now, of our program, you know, we have a board of directors that, that was involved to the point that, you know, we had them being in, in, in public entities and okay. united ways and they, to be visible. Sure. To show that we was definitely going to be a part of our community, which was back in Raleigh County. Gotcha. And so with that, you know, we sprung head into areas that we was um, unfamiliar with. We wasn't prepared for it, so to speak, but we adapt mm -hmm. because of the fact that, you know, it was needed. Mm -hmm. And so with those trainings that, that uh, uh, me and some of the directors were just received, we was able to deliver those programs to the, to the, to the individuals. I, I just, you know, to, to hear about this and hear how successful it's been and, and for you to see like some of your former students or, or you know, you know, former, um, you know, I guess you would say. Well, you're you know, uh, they, I used to wear suits because we, you know, because we was you're in teaching school. And yeah, you're right, teaching, right, right. But to see them with their kids, yes, that's powerful, right well, there. Well, one of the things too is that a lot of them. Now, mind you, Luke, mm -hmm. I'm 70 years old. I just had a birthday two well, weeks ago. Yeah, man, younger you know, than me. God's good. Okay. <laughs> and so they're saying, Mr. Lever, why can't you get to the Muster Project Store again? Well, I started in the, involved in the Muster Project when I was 35. Okay. So it's like it's time for that. The group that I've had that are now in their 30s, it's time for you to come around, you know, because our, hand, our symbol of, of, of the uh, Muster Pride is a big hand reaching back in for the little hand, like big hand, little brother, that type of thing, mm -hmm. see? So, and, and that's what I tell the kids. I mean, you can only run a race so long. Right. And things have changed. And mm -hmm. so you got to be able to adapt. And so we're hoping that you will come about. Well, there's been some that's wanted to but they see that it's hard work it's not easy yeah you know you got to have a structure to it you know you got to have some training that sort of thing and i would i have always explained to any of them that i would help them in any kind of way sure and so with the muster project you know i'm hoping that i don't know how many more years i can still be involved but i want i, I don't want it to fade away because we really have made a, a a legend for Muster Project in, in, in West Virginia, Raleigh County. Mm -hmm. And and so I'm hoping, hopefully within the next few years, that someone I can get someone else to come in and kind of keep the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't, then that's another thing that would fade away. And then sometimes, you know, someone that's not sparked, like Booker Walker was sparked to bring it up. Right. So I've been carrying that torch with the board of directors for so long, but then it needs to be another re-spark, if you know what I mean. Right. Folks, this is good stuff, and we still have a whole nother second half to today's show. Definitely appreciate you joining us here on your Sunday morning. And when I come back, we'll have more with myself and Mr. Lee Leftwich, the director of The Muster Project. Stay with us.
And welcome back to another WOAY Community Forum. And today we have Mr. Lee Lefwich, who is the director of the Muster Project in nearby Beckley. Uh, great stuff, and, and folks, this is, uh, you know, some stuff that interests me, of course, you know, whenever I see young people being helped and having an opportunity. And, you know, one of the stigmas with us as we get older is, is that, you know, as you get successful or you do some good things, you kind of forget, yes. you know, where you come from. Exactly. And, and, you know, so, so to see what you're doing, I, I commend you for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Because one of the things, you know, people ask me, it says, uh, well, Lee, how, what drove you to this? It's got to be within you. Mm -hmm. You can't go to schooling and, and do this. It's got to be in your heart. Mm -hmm. you know? And I tell them, a lot of time I go to trainings, people will mistake me for a minister. Mm -hmm. They say, you're a minister? I say, yes, I am. I'm a minister of the, of the word of the Lord to try to help our fellow man. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I carry that around with me because I carry it around as a ministry. Sure. Not as an organization, as a program, uh, you know, a job I get paid from. I got you. It's a ministry because God is going to supply all my needs, right? Mm -hmm. So when I go to that and I use that as my inspiration, because mm -hmm. there's times I'm like, man, why are you doing this? I can understand. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's everywhere. <laughs> right, right, you know. And then God, because I told you to do it. That's Absolutely. That, you know? And so I get up and get striving. And, and once you see a gleam or an expression on a young child's face that, you know, that they, you know that you've helped them mm -hmm. and which brings, you know, to the part of the Raleigh County Teen Court. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it was something that we had been involved with, with juvenile justice for, it, for our entirety of the, of the Marshall Project. We started off in juvenile justice. Okay. It wasn't so much as a, uh, what you call a, a girls' boys club, you know, and people kind of try to get us in that fold. We said, no, 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 we're working directly with juvenile justice. Gotcha. So we, had, we addressed that early, mm -hmm. you know. Because what we're trying to get the troubled youth out of the system, keep mm -hmm. them out of the system, yeah. so we didn't lose our focus. Gotcha. Because sometimes in, the, in some of my grant writing, you can start chasing what's called wild horses. Mm -hmm. You just start chasing the dollars mm -hmm. instead of the ideal. So you have to stay focused because you can easily get in that trend and say, "Oh man, I got to get this money. I got to get this money." Mm -hmm. Well, are you losing your focus of your of your program, your grassroots? So with that, we we did a shoplifting program mm -hmm. that we got. First time offenders, shoplifters from juvenile probation. It was a, it's a program called Shoplifted It's Alternative. Nice. So people were saying, well, Lisa, are you teaching them how to shoplift? I said, no, no I'm, I'm teaching, teaching what would happen right. if they it's shoplift. Just shoplift. So the people would say, like, well, how come you're not publicizing this more? I said, well, you know, I look at it this way. If you knew there was a program out there that you can go out and shoplift and get caught for the first time, that you can come to, to the Muster Project, then you know, Muster Project shoplifting program, and be involved with a twelve-hour course and get that expunged from your record. You what might would you, go, do? you you might go out and shoplift more. Because <laughs> right, right. I, I, I know I got something to fall back on. Exactly. Yeah, no. And so sometimes some of the kids would come and they said, "Have you heard about? Oh yeah, I heard about you, Mr. Leftwich." I said, "So what have you heard?" Well, I heard if I get caught shoplifting, that you you can get you can clean me up, you can get straightened up. So that's why I never publicized it, right? Smart man. Yes, because, you know, we, when we started off, look, we was doing approximately about 150 kids a year, mm -hmm. you know, through the whole year. There's roughly 360 some kids that juvenile probation seen. So we was, half of them was involved with shoplifting. Right. As of probably five years ago, we only had three kids that was caught shop that was caught shoplifting. I got you. Okay, because you know, we don't know. But today. those numbers have dwindled. Yeah, the numbers went down. And and so when I write my reports, got to write my reports what was going on, I try to contest to the fact that we played a part of that. Of course. Because you did. kids are are peer to one another mm -hmm. and we was I always deputize them and said, Now I want you to go out and tell three other youth that you're hanging around that shop that and is wrong. Can keep you from going in the military, can keep you getting a scholarship, can keep you from getting your driver's license. Oh real? yeah, these things happen with juvenile records. Yeah. Nobody's teaching them that. Nobody's telling them that. So with that we was able to start the Raleigh Tonic Teen court mm -hmm. because of the fact that we already had rapport with juvenile probation. Nice. It was a sort of win win and I was kind of hesitant at first because, again, you know, I'm trying to win my way out. But, again, I seen an opportunity to help you not have this record against them and to be able to, you know, dampen their future, so to speak. And with that, I was able to – have you ever heard of a, a, a disproportionate minority contact coordinator? Mm -mm. Okay. What a disproportionate minority contact coordinator is is that the, the, every state – is supposed to have one through juvenile division of juvenile justice service mm -hmm. and that person has is instrumentated and in going and try to get programs 
to offer uh, alternatives to uh, diversion programs for juveniles that get into the system. Okay. Because again, our numbers of youth, not just so much as black and white, but as, as youth, mm -hmm. we was increasing our juvenile justice input 94%. While others was down like two, three, five, eight percent that was reducing. Wow. Who's the last one on the totem pole of this thing? Yeah. So w there was a grant, wrote the grant, was doing that, was doing great. Now it takes three to five years to get any program going. You know sure. that yourself, sure. right? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what was really going on, but I'm going to say it because it's what I feel. I was making headway with it. Now, mind for you, the juvenile justice system is, is a how can you say it? it's it's a resource mm -hmm. for employment sure so in washington state they shut down four four or five juvenile detention centers they shut down the four or five juvenile detention centers but they didn't shut down the building those correctional officers then becomes mentors to those kids that was getting in the system you see you can change things around and still sure. get a good result, still get the result. Well, i was trying to trying to deliver that to the state of west virginia mm -hmm. long story short they threw me on the bus Oh, wow. And so wow. I had no support. Mm -hmm. I had no um, endorsement from the governor at this time. He mm -hmm. knew about it, but he, he wasn't endorsing it. Mm -hmm. And so it was like I was, out, I was in the water by myself, so to speak. Okay. I had an advisory group mm -hmm. that didn't support me as well mm -hmm. because I was outspoken. Okay. I mean, I, I, I'll tell you what's on my mind, whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> you know? But it, 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 and it, it got to be a battle within my structure that I was coming out of. So I'm like, well, you know, Lord, if you don't want me to do that, then I'll just come back home. I'll stay in my own little circle. And I because I already had the Raleigh County Teen Court and gotcha. they knew this. So I was trying to do that with things in the Muster Project and some of the other programs to hit, and take them to other counties. Sure. See, now what happened was. When we, we was doing that, I was able to use that information to be able to set up the fact that I could do the Raleigh County Teen Court. Gotcha. The judges that I had to go to get it, the, the circuit court judges, mm -hmm. they knew me. Okay. They knew me as Lee Leftwood. They didn't know me as in, they knew me, you know, mm -hmm. see them on the street, mm -hmm. had lunch with a few of them. So it's like a personal thing. Okay. And they was definitely involved in, my, in the endeavor that we was trying to put forward of working with these youth. Okay. So it's a win-win thing. And what happened with the teen court, I love it as, as well because I'm going into my third wave of youth because I have them to the end of 12th grade and then they oh, graduate wow. and go on, wow. you know, which is a blossom. Mm -hmm. But Luke, I know of eight of them that from being involved with the teen court went to college to get a lawyer's degree. Because being lawyers, and the court system is set up just like any other adult court system, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. Judges, uh, prosecuting the defense, Mm -hmm. Recorder, mm -hmm. jury, right? Mm -hmm. So, the 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 prosecuting attorney and the defense attorney, you know, I ha I know nothing about the case. I get the youth, I get the charge, I give it the information to them. I hear about it at in the courtroom because sure. I just you know manipulate them around to make things are in order. But they're the ones who actually ask the questions, do the opening statement, mm -hmm. all of that. I mean, it is really beautiful. Well, people are saying, well, well, can you have it publicized? Well, I can't because of juvenile records. Well, you can. I was going to say yeah, because of the, yeah. the juveniles, you You're can't. Right. That's not public. Right. You, you, can't, you can't just. But we do do a mock trial. Okay. And with a mock trial, you know, we invite the public in. And sure, so they, they can, can see how you do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let, do, do, do you feel like because of the success you've had helping these young kids, do you feel like if you ever have a situation where maybe there is a kid to shoplifts or whatever, the fact that you have the rapport with the judges and they've seen your body of work to help these kids, maybe it, it, it lessens the sentence or, or it lessens, you know, maybe what they would have done uh, imposed on them had they not been able to go through your program. Well, I'm a, a good question, Luke, because what I have done when I was researching for the DMC thing, you know, you got to have stats. Mm -hmm. Well, I went back as far as I could with our involvement with the uh, shopping program mm -hmm. and I because I want to have names and numbers and birth dates I'd rather sure. have social security numbers gotcha. so I was trying to go back and, and look at adult records okay. to see if any of them had had you know the uh, bridge over yeah right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, and and from what I could gather it looked to be maybe like four to five percent of the youth that I had names up and, and sometimes and that it might be uh, Dennis a Smith, uh, uh, Dennis Smith. So sometimes that would throw me off. Sure, sure. So it, you know, it's sort of a a a, a factor of 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 
probability of how close I can get. But I, with, with the information I got, it was only like four or five percent of the kids that had been involved with the Mercer Project with our shoplifting program that actually did an adult charge. So I wow. used that information to show how being involved with youth, it's, I, mean, I can go on and on and on about people, one of the young girl was working in a, a, a store mm -hmm. and she said, you and Mr. Left with aren't you? I said, yeah. She said, you remember me? I said, well, honey, you know, y'all you, grow up. I, you know. <laughs> I said, so you was involved with my pro Oh, yeah, yeah, your shoplifting program. And she says, I really learned from that, and I never shoplifted again. Mm -hmm. I said, well, that's wonderful. She got married and had, had a young daughter. Holding, so, she, you know, that was very impressionable. And, it, and it's, like I said, it's very impressionable when they recognize you. Well, you, you know, the other thing, too, is, and, and obviously we're not condoning these kids shoplifting. Sure, sure. Sometimes kids are shoplifting because they don't have anything. They're hungry. They need food. I mean, so it's not like, I, you know, there's a stigma that's put out there sometimes sure. with these kids. And, you know, people think that they're just bad. Yeah, right. And right. that's not necessarily the right. case. Sometimes you, you need to right. survive. You right. do things to survive. Right. We see that all the way up at the exactly. top. Exactly. <laughs> well, mean, come there's, on. Nine, there's <laughs> nine emotions that a person have mm -hmm. that can commit them to shoplifting. Because it's, and it's sort of like an entitlement, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So again, just straight up hunger, you know, mm -hmm. girl, boyfriends uh, mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you not accepted by your peers, you trying to be, we had one, we had one incident, with several incidents, but one in particular, where at a high school, in order for you to become part of this group, this high, high society group, so to speak, mm -hmm. you had to show your allegiance by going out and shoplifting. Yeah, Two little this. young girls was A students at mm -hmm. this particular high school, mm -hmm. straight A students, but they want to become part of this little clique, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Went out shoplifting. Got caught. First time, right? Come to my program, I clean them up, and I chastise them. I said, listen, I'm going to tell you something. Let no one get you in trouble. Get in trouble on your own. And that's not the kind of group that I want to associate myself with anyway. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, peer pressure, I get it with teens and sure. young people, but... No, I mean, you know, right. you, you, you create your own clique. <laughs> exactly. Because what was happening is that, that and the, the, the young man who was over it, he was gloating about it. I mean, he, he was really gloating. Oh. I had one. Now, now sometimes, mm -hmm. at incidents, they didn't have to be charged with a uh, shoplifting petition. Mm -hmm. A parent, extra child, extra juvenile court uh, for them to send them to my, my program. Nice. They walked in and saw all of these things in his room. Like, where do you get this from? And so he confessed. He told him it was you. Right. So what happened was when he did that, then we was able to uh, remify that, that, that petition against him. Well, look, we've got probably about 30 seconds. I mean, how can people, if anyone wants to reach out to you, how can they get in touch with well, you? Well, they can get in touch with me through Lee Leftwich, uh 67 uh, at gmail.com, also at 304-573-7810, uh, 304-731-6406. And remember I told you we weren't going to have enough time before exactly. we started? Look, well, we'll I appreciate you coming. Oh, yeah, we'll get you back <laughs> on. Folks, Lee Leftwich, great, great guy right here, the, the director of the Muster Project. We appreciate you joining us. Have a great remaining part of your Sunday, and I'll see you at 6 a.m. in the morning.